Who's in the stage? I don't know, but I hear tell he's pretty important. Someone said no one this important has ever come this way before. Very famous people, some say. No one important ever comes to armor. Well, there's a first time for everything. Who is in that stage? Oh, there's probably not so big of a guy in there. They're just some little squirts. No, they're big stuff, or so I hear. Whoever they are, I bet this town will never be the same again. Where are we, Gramps? The town of armor. Armor? <laughs> yep, this is the town of armor. The whole of it. So this is armor. Okay, Pilgrim. You gonna stay in there all day? Uh, sorry. Uh, where's the hotel? Well, the hotel armor's the best place in town, right over there. This is a right fine town. Pee Wee, you want to get the bags? Yes, Mr. Andrade. Your room's all ready. You coming? Nice boy. And just my size. He'd make a good friend. This is your room. Like it? This will do nicely. And you're Pee Wee? Yep. I can get you some sarsaparilla if you want some. What's sarsaparilla? It's soda pop. I'll take a, a diet sarsaparilla. By anyone's reckoning, I'd say Armor's got its share of trouble. Scared, Gramps? No, I don't think so, Dudley. Let's mosey on over. Come on, Philemon. <coughs> Mr. Tiger, don't die, Mr. Tiger. Oh, he'll be all right, Pee Wee. He just hit the ground kind of hard. Did he get hit? Must have, but the bullet didn't kill him. Good. Then he's not dead. But the fall did. He just sailed off of that roof. Did you see it? I told him to tuck and roll. No tuck and no roll. Just splat. Poor Jake. Just one big splat. Uh, uh. He's still alive. Mr. Jake. Mr. Jake, are you okay? Oh, I'd be fine, Pee Wee, if you'd quit swiping my face. Oh, sorry, Mr. Jake. Where'd they get you? Well, I ain't as much a hero as you think, Pee Wee. Uh, when that old bandit took a shot at me, I tripped over my size 12s and scraped up my new boots and everything. But 
that's not much of a price to pay to keep the peace in the town of Armour. Baked beans are mighty fine. You tell your mom I said so. I brought you a surprise. Well, looky here. Fresh apple. Looks tasty. And what's this? A Bible, Sheriff. May I give it to my daddy? You sure can. And what do you say we cut your dad a piece of this pie? Oh, thank you. I need something to set me free. Can, Daddy. Jesus can set you free. Huh. Jesus won't get me out of this jail. Go on, leave me be. Uncle Andy, I'm ready to go. How's your sarsaparilla? Not enough carbonation. I think I like Dr. Pepper better. <laughs> It'll grow on you. You know, I reckon what the town of armor needs is a, a little armor. What kind of armor? The right stuff. God's armor. The armor of the heart. You mean law and order? No, it's not short on law and order, but, uh, well, take Pee-wee. In the middle of all that happened, he remained strong. He cared about Jake and Amanda, even Mr. Taggart. Yeah, I couldn't figure that out. Yep, that boy's got something. Don't you think so, Philemon? <coughs> what? You finish that sarsaparilla of yours, and we'll talk in our room. You think they might sell us some french fries? Just finish your sarsaparilla. <laughs> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And that's the whole armor of God. Yep. Sure would be easy, Gramps, if we could just buy it. <laughs> yep. But I'm afraid we can't buy it. We live it. We live it? We live it. Yeah. I like that. We live it. <clears throat> Truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, 
salvation, the Word of God, the Bible. Bumpers. Morning, Amanda. How's your dad? Not talking much. Mom and me, we made him a pie, and I gave him a Bible. Well, the truth is, your dad committed a terrible wrong. I know. If I were him, I don't think I could find it in me to face a daughter like you. Doesn't he love you? What you love about him makes me plumb loco. Why, he's a dirty, no good... He's my daddy. You think giving that ornery critter a slice of pie and a Bible going to help? You'd just as well go over there and stick your head in that watering trough. Can't hurt trying. Well, don't get your hopes up. Even daddies do things wrong. What's Pee Wee? I reckon that young whippersnapper of a son of mine had a little trouble getting to sleep last night. What with your dad getting arrested and all? I'm going to go hook up the wagon for him. He's over there sleeping. I'll be right along. Want to go for a ride? It can't be daylight. Wake me up at noon. The sheriff told me one of his deputies saw a lone stranger just outside town. The lone stranger? Think we can meet him? I'll go back to sleep. Besides, it's out near Boot Hill anyway. Boot Hill? Here we come. Where are you going? Want to meet the Lone Stranger? The Lone Stranger? The man in white. We saw him ride into town earlier, then disappear. The excitement never stops, hey, Philemon? <laughs> Come on up, we'll give you a ride. I know, but what's it mean when the Bible talks about the whole armor of God? Well, we don't carry swords anymore or shields, or helmets. But the Bible says we should put on God's armor so we can stand up to wrong, be prepared on the inside, so when we meet our enemy, the devil, we can fight him and defeat him. When given a choice between right and wrong, we choose the right. We choose the honest and the true. Like a warrior? Exactly. Only most of our battles are fought on the inside. I get it. The person we're usually up against is usually us, me. Bullseye, your responsibility is to put on God's armor so that when temptations come, you can resist the devil. How, Grants? Well, first we take the helmet of salvation. Without the helmet, we have no chance against the devil. We take the helmet of salvation by accepting God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior. Because he took the punishment of our sin. When you take the helmet, then God gives you the rest of the armor. Truth, righteousness, boldness, and faith. It's yours for the taking. I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And speaking of warriors... Whoa! Look, it's a lone stranger. Now who's that with him? It looks like an Indian brave. 
An Indian warrior. What do you suppose they're up to? Look, the lone stranger's putting something in the Indian saddlebag. You don't suppose they were involved in the bank robbery, do you? No. Lone stranger would never be a part of something like that. Look, the lone stranger is heading out. Uh-oh. Let's get out of here. Hang on. And here, I thought this was a vacation. <laughs> Hold tight, Philemon. Yeah. Fear got the best of us. Why, hello there. Just out for a ride in our wagon. Need a lift? Lift? Why lift? You're some kind of nut. I have horse. Right. Well, we'll just be mosing along. See ya. What's your name, short stuff? Pee-wee. Short stuff. Short stuff. Peewee, Peewee. <laughs> Short stuff. What real name? Real name? Uh, real name. Aloysius Bernard Bumpers. Me like Peewee. Peewee good. I'm Miranda. How? How? Mm, no. How do you do, Amanda? <laughs> Who are these two? They look like something from toy shop. Look like they're worth two Indian blankets and one string of cheap beads. You must be a brave warrior. Me like little toy with bald head. Other toy talk too? I'm Dudley Dumpling. And I'm his gramps. And this is his dog, Philemon. I am Brave Eagle. Nice to meet you, Brave Eagle. I tell stories. I tell good stories. I tell true stories. I use no words. How can you tell a story without using words? My secret. <laughs> you like biscuits and stew? Your own recipe. Brave Eagle, Buffalo Stew. Own franchises all over the West. Many reservations. Many white man towns. Keep big money. Uh, he's big headache. Tell us a story. No words. How does he do it? Easy. Not easy. Brave Eagle must be a mime. Toy with no hair. Plenty smart. He's my gramps. Yes. I do see resemblance. Both come from the same sewing machine. <laughs> you, I call Little Eagle. You, I call Bald Eagle. Very wise, with eyes that pierce the heart. What do you call me? I call you Princess Morning Star. You shine like the star. What about me, Brave Eagle? You know Pee Wee. You. You difficult to figure out. 
Brave Eagle, go feed horse now. When you finish buffalo stew, you wash dishes. You come back when sun go down. Brave Eagle, tell you story without words then. She's friendly. In a spooky sort of way. What you doing? I'm gonna check the saddlebag for the loot. I wanna see what this lone stranger put in it. Hey, this is heavy. Keep your eyes peeled, Amanda. Pee-wee. Yeah? Don't you trust Brave Eagle? I don't know. Sort of, I guess. Well, you either trust him or you don't. Which is it? Aren't you curious? Sure I am. But the right thing to do is wait. Let Brave Eagle reveal what's in his saddlebag. Yeah. You're right. Come on, Amanda. Let's get things cleaned up here. It's difficult to use God's armor, isn't it, Gramps? It begins inside. Faith, truth, God's word, a pure heart. Take that saddlebag. It's a small thing. No one would know if we took a peek inside, but it's not ours. You use God's armor against the little things, Dudley, so that you're ready when the big things come. You start with little things, Dudley. You have to start with the little things. I'm glad my mom let me come back to the campfire. In a faraway land, in a time long ago, there was a very tall and very sturdy tree. And the tree was very special. Now one evening, as the young tree looked out upon the sky, it noticed a bright and glowing star in the eastern heavens. What does it mean, the young tree thought, as the shepherds began to gather beneath its branches. Suddenly, a great light shone, and an angel appeared and spoke wondrous things. Frightened, the shepherds covered their eyes and listened. When the angel had finished, the shepherds hurried to the town of Bethlehem. Many years passed, and the tree grew taller and taller. Men came with heavy axes and chopped the tree down. It was tossed on a wagon and taken many miles away to a carpenter shop in a small dusty town called Nazareth. The shop was owned by a father and son who worked side by side every day. The father took orders and the son worked beside him sawing, hammering, planning, polishing. The carpenter's son showed such care that the once beautiful tree could barely wait till he turned into something beautiful and special again. But soon the older carpenter took ill and died. The son finished the last of his father's orders and sold the shop and all the unused wood. Men came and bid on the once beautiful tree and took it by wagon to Jerusalem. There it was bought by the head of the Roman garrison. One night in early spring, Roman soldiers carrying torches gathered the beam and took it to the inner court. Excitement was in the air. A fire blazed, high priests came and went, a cock crowed, Men fled and cried, and another man was led away. Soon the dawn came up, and as the light shed its warmth on the courtyard, a young man, bleeding, dressed in a scarlet robe, in a crown of thorns, was led on to a balcony. I know this man, thought the once beautiful tree. I know him. It was the carpenter's son, Jesus of Nazareth. 
Swiftly the cross beam was placed on his shoulders, his wrists tied to both ends, and together they made their way to Calvary. How could this be? thought the once beautiful tree. The gentle carpenter being crucified, and, and I, his cross, this cannot be. But on the windswept hillside, they removed the man's robe and laid him upon the cross. The hands of the gentle carpenter were nailed to the tree that wanted to be special. The sky grew dark, and the man spoke. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The once beautiful tree remembered the words of the angels on another hillside many years ago. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly, the once beautiful tree realized that it was not just a carpenter from Nazareth that had been crucified on it, but God's own Son, the Lord of the universe, its creator, who was dying on it for the sins of the world. And the tree felt special again. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. see him out here. Church would do you some good, Tagger. I said out here. Okay, Andy. Go get him. No use pushing a good thing when the varmint's stuck in his ways. Go get him, Andy. That ain't gonna go easy for you, Taggart. So you better make it easy on that wife and daughter of yours. I won't have you blaming them or anybody else. You made the mess you made. Least you could do is tell them you're sorry. I gotta go away for a while. The sheriff here's been in touch with the federal marshal over at Silver City. Ain't gonna be a trial because of my making a confession be all grown up by the time I get out. Made a mistake, pumpkin. You be brave now, you hear? Well, Daddy. Me too. Liz? I'm angry, Hank. I'm plum angry. I know, Liz. I'm sorry. You were a great fool not to have listened. Not to have even tried. You paid more attention to the wrong people for all the wrong reasons. You do some good hard thinking while you're gone. Some good hard reading of the good books she done brung you. Put your heart into it. I forgive you, Hank. I just wish I didn't have to. It won't be pleasant where you're going. 
I will be here for you when you get out. I'm praying for you. I'll be praying real hard. I'll be praying real hard. Time to go, Hank. Bye, Daddy. We love you. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty. was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling Exchange it someday for a crown. Why does life have to be so hard? One minute you're up, next minute you're down. Most times it's because we feel sorry. Feeling sorry for myself or for somebody else. Feeling sorry for yourself is dumb. I know, but how do I stop? And how do I stop worrying about my daddy? Dudley's gram says we're supposed to put on God's armor. Maybe it's time to use that shield of faith. Look, you did all you could for your dad. Now it's his turn to do something about it. But I'm worried about him. Worrying don't change nothing. Pray for him. Write him letters. Take him a pie even. But sitting here worrying makes me worry. About what? Well, you for one. You gotta let go of it. You gotta trust God. But what if something happens to my daddy? What if? Always what if. You know how many what ifs could happen? Why, you'd be sitting in this rocker for days, just counting them all. You and your mom did the best that you could. You can't go back. None of us can. All you can do is go forward and keep doing the best you can. Amanda, what your dad needs is the helmet of salvation. We'll both pray for him. Thanks, Pee Wee. Thanks for caring. I'll try to trust God and not worry. That's good, Amanda. God needs brave warriors, not brave warriors. Worry is like being in a jail cell. You can't do anything except sit in a box with bars. Or sit in a rocker. Pee Wee? God feels sorry for us, doesn't he? He sure does, and he did something about it. He didn't just sit around stewing. He sent his son to be one of us, to suffer with us, to die for us, and then to come alive again, to give us victory over our enemy, the devil. The Bible says that Jesus was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin, Hebrews 4.15. So, he knows how you feel. Let's pray to him right now about your dad. He'll help. That's the best thing to do when you're worried. I hear say your gang ain't too happy about your confession. You being a stool pigeon and all. Fact I hear they're plumb mad. Those guys are probably crazy enough to try just about anything to get even. <laughs> no, sir, I wouldn't be in your shoes for anything. <laughs> of course, they probably wouldn't fit me anyway. <laughs> yep, those guys are just about mad enough to try to shoot you. 
Yeah, but you'll be safe up in Silver City in the jail. <laughs> Not to worry, though. Ain't no safer place than right here with me and old Betsy. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time I was in the war? It was me and old Stonewall himself. And we was riding straight into an ambush. Of course, we didn't know it at the time. Big rocks trail came down to a narrow spot. It was a perfect place. Suddenly, a shot rang out. I lost my hat that time, too. You varmint! Get us out of here, Andy! Get out, Dagger! It's you they want! to escape. Just give us Taggart and you can go free. Never! My job's to get Taggart to Silver City and I aim to do it or die trying. That can be arranged. Say your prayers. Stranger, are we glad to see you? You saved our lives. Get out! Drop it, mister. Don't make no sense, Taggart. That shot was intended for you. He took it on purpose. Andy, round up the horses. We've got to get the lone stranger back to town. Looks like his horse, Sugar, has already gone back. He'll find us back in armor. I want to help. All right, you varmint. Make yourself useful. Untie. Hi, Brave Eagle. Can you tell us another story? No story. Friend hurt. We'd better see what has happened. Uh, come on, Philemon. Just when I stop worrying. Wagon they 
it's a daddy way in. Look, there's his hat. I'll see if he's inside. You stay outside. But Amanda wants to know if her father is in there. He here. You wait outside. I want to help, Brave Eagle. Good. You help outside. Well, he's in there. Is Daddy hurt? I don't know. Brave Eagle wouldn't let me in. Someone must be hurt pretty bad. Here's some blood. Mm. How come we can't go in, Gramps? Good reason, I reckon. What good reason? I can't think of one good one. To spare your feelings. Big people don't like to worry little people, especially by letting them see others who are sick or hurting. Hogwash. Now, now. Someday, I'll die. You gonna let Dudley be there? Dudley? I don't like to think about it, Gramps. But when you do, yes, I'd, I'd like to be there. You know, children, we've been learning the value of making choices. Death, our physical death, is a fact. God loves us and sent his son to die in our place. If we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior and believe in him, we go straight to be with him when we die. Gramps, since I've believed in Jesus, I'm not afraid to die. I'm glad to hear that, Dudley. But until we die, we're to be God's warriors. I'd like to take that helmet, sword, and shield that the Bible talks about and knock down that door. Now, now, Pee-wee. Let Jesus Christ, who lives inside you, hold the sword and shield, not you. Be on guard in your own heart. That's what he wants. Not charging the door head-on without thinking, just because you think you're right. It's always a mistake to fly off the handle and do the first thing that comes to your mind. Like my dad did, huh? Do you think it's my daddy that's hurt? We really don't know. What if he... What if he dies? He's not ready to die. He won't go to heaven, because he hasn't accepted Jesus as his savior. Been hurt pretty bad, Brave Eagle. I've taken out the bullet, but he's lost an awful lot of blood. I've done what I could. He's in God's hands now. Has been for many moons. When we young boys, we ask, we both ask Jesus to be our savior. I see him now? In a few minutes. He's resting now. I don't want him to be disturbed for a while. I think we should pray, Amanda, that God will give your father one more opportunity to hear about the Lord, and that this time his heart will be open. We don't need fancy words. Prayer is not a game of magic. It's not abracadabra and presto, everything's the way we want it. We talk to God and commit all things to him. He is still Lord. We are still his children. We ask, why? And he answers, why not? Well, will you pray out loud for us, Gramps? Dear Lord, we know that you love us. And you love Amanda's father even more than she does. Please give him another chance to hear how you gave your son to take the punishment for his sin and help Amanda to take that shield of faith and use it to quench those fiery darts of worry and fear. And one more thing, Lord. Uh, please help whoever it is that's hurt in there. In Jesus' name, amen. 
He's gonna die, ain't he? Don't know that. God may take him to heaven. May leave him here with us. It'll make no sense. Should be me lying on that table. Why'd he do it? I deserve to die, not him. You not ready to die. You're right, Brave Eagle. Been thinking about that all the way back to town. Been thinking about all those times Liz and Amanda have talked to me about God. They said God's only son died for me. They tell you truth. Taggart. This not first time, someone take bullet for you. Not real bullet, much more than that. Jesus Christ took death for you. Taggart, Jesus Christ, God himself choose to take all your sins on himself at cross. He shed his precious blood and die for you. God said in his book that who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned to the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. Taggart, you sheep, you strayed, but you come to the shepherd right now I'm tired of running, Brave Eagle. I want God's gift, but I've done so many bad things. Bible say, all have sinned. There are none righteous. All deserve punishment in hell. Lord Jesus Christ died on cross to take our place. Take punishment for sin. What do I do? Simple. We read in the Bible in Romans 10, 9, and 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You do it? Right now? Do it! Call on him to save you right now. You talk to God now. Okay. Okay, Lord. It's ain't gonna be so pretty, but... I am about the rotten sinner around these parts, but then you already know that. I know I deserve hell, but I want to be saved. I thank you for dying for me and shedding your blood for my sins. Lord, I, I call upon your name and claim you as my personal savior and accept this free gift of salvation. I ask you to make me a new man in Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna go up there again. Princess Morningstar, come. Is Daddy okay? You just come. You can come now, Brave Eagle. Daddy, you're 
you're okay. I'm more than okay, Pumpkin. I'm free. Free? Daddy, did you ask Jesus to be your savior? Daddy! I have known many moons, many falls and winters. In my youth, I knew many brave warriors, many brave scouts. When I became Brave Eagle, I carried the spear. I put on the war paint. I wore the feathers. I wanted to give my spear and feathers to a young, brave warrior scout. I do not carry spear now. I only have one feather to give. You like feather? I'm not a warrior. Feather come from great eagle in sky. Eyes sharp. Bet he didn't have to wear glasses. Ah, uh, strong wings. St strong neck. Stiff neck. You, I call warrior scout. No spear, no war paint, just feather. Feather for heart to fly, to brush the wings of God and fly together. Mm. The great warrior and his warrior scout. I... I feel ashamed. You brave warrior scout. Come. My friend waits. I promise to bring him brave warrior scout. And brave eagle always keeps his promises. Warrior scout run fast. I go too. God's thoughts are so high, how can we know them? It takes brave warrior scouts. It takes a brave eagle to fly close and brush the wings of God. Well, I was wrong about the town of armor. Turned out it had plenty of armor. And the people were not only wearing God's armor, but also using it. Amanda took the shield of faith and God rewarded her faith by making her daddy into a new man. Mr. Taggart still had to go to prison for a while, but he took with him the helmet of salvation. Brave Eagle showed his feet were really shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The lone stranger, well, it wasn't long before he was back in the saddle again, righting wrongs. I reckon he was one man that was most always wearing the breastplate of righteousness. And Pee-wee, well, he finally saw what was in Brave Eagle's saddlebags. It was the Sword of the Spirit. Bibles that the lone stranger had placed there. Bibles in Brave Eagle's Indian language to take back to his tribe. Life's like a race, Dudley. You put all of yourself into it. We try, we fail, we win, we keep going. And things may not always go the way we planned, but with Jesus Christ in our hearts, we learn to keep going, put our best foot forward, our yes means yes, and our no means no. Our life means something. It's good to be alive, Gramps. Yes, Dudley, it's good oh. to be alive. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord 
shall be saved.